Hello and welcome to this PID controller tutorial. A PID controller can be used for many things in stationaries, but in this video we are going to go through how to set it up on a gas generator. Before we get started I want to do a quick demonstration. The PID controller is managing this system. It's trying to balance the battery at 80% by managing the volume pump on the fuel line. So even if our power, con power consumption changes, it should self-adjust. I can demonstrate this by changing my power consumption. If we jump up to 44 kilowatts, you will see that the entire system recalibrates. I can also change where I want the battery to be balanced. Right now it's at 80% but I can set it down to 70% and you'll see that the system shuts down the generator and it will balance back out at 70. So what is a PID control? PID stands for Proportional, Integral and Derivative and it's used to control some sort of process. In stationaries this can be a lot of things like temperature control or pressure control or in my case power control. The first thing you'll need is some sort of output from the system. This is your process variable and it's usually some kind of sensor reading or you could read straight from a device. Secondly, it needs one input. This is usually called the set point or reference and it's the value you want it to reach. Then you take the difference of these two values and you will get the error. The error then goes into the PID control calculations and out comes the output. This value goes back into the system usually through some device that directly or indirectly controls the process. This device is called an actuator. All of this together gives us a feedback loop that self-corrects the system. We are now back in stationaries and as you can see I have shut down the system. Uh, if I try to turn this on, nothing happens, no power is generated, and my PID controller is completely empty. And we're going to go through how to set it up. So first we are going to import the code. And we'll go to our code editor here and import the PID code. There's a lot to go through here, but we'll do it step by step. We'll start at the top here and we have the set point. This is the value we want the system to reach. In this case we are trying to control the battery ratio so we need to set a set point that makes sense in this context. So I'll set it to 0 0.8 which would be 80%. Then we have the KP, the TI and the TD variables. These are the PID tuning parameters and we'll skip these for now. Then we have the minimum output and maximum output. And these are mostly for safety reasons but they determine what kind of values minimum and maximum the PID controller should output. We are controlling a volume pump which has a minimum of 0 and a maximum of 100 but we are pushing fuel through so I can see no reason why this should be ever be more than 5. Then we have the filter ticks. This PID controller includes an input filter. And for this tuning process we are going through here, I would advise setting this to 3, 4 or maybe 5. I'll go, for, I'll go with 4 for now. Then we have the regulator mode. The regulator mode is important to get right and the easy way to think about this is if our 
process value is higher than our set point should the actuator increase or decrease. If it should increase it's a direct mode controller, if it should decrease it's a reversed mode controller. Now since we are controlling the ratio on the battery, if our battery charge is too high I want my volume pump to decrease. So in this case it's reverse mode. Then we have the set point multiplier and that's just a multiplier that's multiplied with the set point device readout and we'll, we'll get to that. Before we continue with the code I'm going to go through the screws. The first screw is the sensor. That's our process variable readout. In this case we are reading directly from the battery. The second screw is the actuator. This is an optional screw. In our case it's the volume pump on the fuel supply. But if you want to rather use a logic writer or a batch writer you can leave this empty and just read the setting variable from the integrated circuit house. The third one is a sleep toggle. Now this is for setting the code to sleep if you don't need it to continuously run. In my case I have a switch here to toggle the generator on and off and I don't need the code to keep running if the generator is off. So I got my switch here to put it into sleep if the, if the generator is off. This is also optional. The last screw is the set point device. We have already chosen a set point in the code, but if you want to, you can set the device here to easily change the set point. And I have a dial over there. So back to the code. We have this section with device variables. Now that we have set up the devices, we can set what type of variable we are reading or setting. So from the sensor, since the sensor is a battery, we are reading the ratio. On the actuator, the volume pump, we are controlling the setting. On the set point device, we could read the setting from the dial and perhaps use a multiplier with it. Or in this case, we could also just read the ratio. The sleep toggle device is just a switch so we can just read the setting variable. So the last thing to set now is the tuning values. And we'll start with just the KP value, that's the proportional value. And we are, there are many ways to tune our PID controller and I'm going to go through how to use the Ziegler and Nichols method. So the first thing we'll do is to set a fitting KP value and there is a small notice here that this should approximately be the maximum output divided by set point and in my case that should be around 6. Now this is just a ballpark estimate to get you on the right track but we can fire it up and see how it works. So I click confirm and I export it. And now I can turn on the system and we'll see what happens. So after a couple of minutes we can see that the system has already settled itself. Even though the system has now balanced itself out nicely, the next step is actually to put it in unbalance. We want the system to oscillate. And we'll do that by increasing the KP value. And it's already at 6, so I'll think I'll, think I'll jump up to 10 and we'll see what happens. Having a graph display for this is very useful. So you see it does jump and it will probably settle back down somewhere.
and yeah it settles down and this is still not what we want we want it to continuously go up and down so I'll continue to increase the KP value until that's what we are getting so as you can see here now it oscillates up and down and it doesn't seem to calm down in any way perhaps a little bit but this is fine and it's important that the oscillation doesn't go all the way down to the minimum value or all the way up to the maximum it keeps oscillating somewhere in between now that we need to have two values from this the first value is the time between the peaks on the graphs and in stationers you can count just you, sh you can just count the ticks because each tick is half a second so we'll start at the top of the next peak and count until the, the next one so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen 16 ticks is about 8 seconds so we'll take a note of that the second value we need is the KP value we used to get this behavior okay so what do we do with these values the KP value that gave us consistent oscillation is in control theory called the KU and the oscillation period is called a TU and we have this chart here and uh, they have different rows depending on what kind of behavior you want the PID controller to have and they have five columns and we only have three inputs and that's because the KI and KD values are just alternatives to using TI and TD values in my PID controller we are just using KP, TI and TD so you don't need to pay attention to the last two columns the rows indicate different behavior you want from the PID controller. You can try some of them out, but I'm going to recommend either use the just the PI, the classic PID, or perhaps the no overshoot method if you want it to be a little bit more careful. So you, you choose a profile you want to try. Let's say we go for the classic PID and we take the our KU value and multiply it by 0.6. And that's our new KP value. Then we take our oscillation period and multiply with 0.5. That's our TI value. And we take the same oscillation period and multiply it by 0.125. And that's our TD value. Okay, so back into stationers, we can now punch in our values. The KP should be 12 in this case. TI came out to 4 and our TD should be 1 and we can click confirm and export and the PID controller should now be completed if you find that the controller takes, a, takes too long to settle down you can either try a different profile or simply repeat the same process using these oscillations here if you want to test the behavior of the PID controller after the controller has settled down and you are unable to change the power consumption like I do here, you can get the same behavior by changing the set point. The PID controller probably needs a bit more fine tuning, but for most use cases we are now done. In this specific case however, there is still one flaw and I'll use this to demonstrate one more concept. If the power consumption increases above what the generator can generate, we'll run into a problem. I'll quickly demonstrate this. Uh, you'll see that the pressure in the fuel pipe, which you can read on this display, will, will start to increase. And that's because the PID controller has no idea that uh, the pressure is building up or that the generator is running at max capacity. All it knows is that the battery charge is dropping and it can still increase the volume pump. And this will not end well. 
One way to solve issues like this is with what's called a cascade control. Cascade control is when you have two different PID controllers in what's called an inner loop and an outer loop. You are still just affecting one actuator, but you're reading two different process variables. And the outer loop PID is not controlling anything directly other than setting the set point for the inner loop PID. So I have now set up a new PID controller here for the inner loop. And my old one is renamed to outer loop. The goal here is that my inner loop is going to manage the volume pump and try to control the generator to any given pressure point. That's the gauge here. And my outer loop PID is still going to read the battery ratio, but instead of operating the volume pump, it's going to operate the, uh, the inner loop PID to decide what operating pressure the generator should hold. In order to tune a cascading PID control setup, we need to tune the inner loop first with the outer loop completely turned off. And when that's done, we can start the outer loop and tune that after. The tuning method is, however, exactly the same. And we start by finding the KP value that sets our system in stable oscillations. Alright, so I went through the tuning process for the inner loop and uh, it's now working quite nicely and I can change the set point on the generator pressure Oop. Export And uh, it's a little bit aggressive, but that's fine. Uh, you'll see that it pretty quickly gets uh, gets tuned in so the next step now is to retune the outer loop because it's not controlling a volume pump anymore. It's controlling uh, the set point for this. So the next step is to tune the outer loop again. And to do this, I need to go to the inner loop and the set point device and select the outer loop PID controller because uh, that's the only thing that this affects. It doesn't have any actuator anymore. Alright, so now I'm tuning my outer loop and as you can see I have stable oscillation and this time I have it with the KP value of 450. So for the outer loop controller I went with the no overshoot profile and after I exported it you can see we have a stable controller. This system should now be completely idiot proof because even though our power consumption increases to more than what the generator can crea create, the pressure in your pipe shouldn't build up. And that's because the outer loop controller, which tries to control the battery to 80%, tells the inner loop controller to keep the generator at 100% operating pressure. And as soon as the generator hits an 100% operating pressure, it doesn't need to increase the volume pump anymore. And as you can see, the pressure in the pipe is decreasing back to zero. And there we go. So it's now operating at 100%, no pressure buildup, and of course we're losing battery power, but nothing we can do about that. Thank you for watching, and I hope to see more people use the PID controller or the gas fuel generator. If you want to test it out yourself, I'll leave both the world and the code on the workshop.